Today I'm going to tie a grasshopper. You've heard of Joe's hopper, Stan's hopper, Dave's hopper. Well, naturally I call this one Bing's hopper. I came up with this about two years ago and I've been improving it ever since. I think it's, is there, I've made improvements. You can use a size 6 to 14 hook. I like to use a 12 because I think that the fish take the smaller grasshoppers a little better than they do with large ones. This is up to you. And it also floats a little better. The wing material I use on this fly is a wood duck flank. The body, I use art foam, which is a tan, and a dyed deer hair body, which is clipped, and that is the yellow tint. The legs, I use a ring neck pheasant tail. Ribbing is gold tinsel. Front legs is rock chuck. And the tying thread is a two aught in a tan. Any shade of tan will do, or even black is, can be used. So now I'll tie the fly. This contraption here with the rubber bands, and I ended up with this automatic reel because it kept keeps the tension uh, uniform. And you use that for what? I use this for uh, mayfly extended bodies, grasshopper extended bodies, some stonefly extended bodies. Any extended body fly I use this is for. And I use a surgical forcep or sutures they're called. To get the this is a monolon. This happens to be red. Maybe you can see that a little better. You can get two to three, four strands if you want. But if you're having a three leg, three tailed fly, you use three strands. A two tailed mayfly, you use two strands. And on the on the grasshopper, it doesn't make any difference because you will cut the uh, it off right up next to the body. And uh, when you Use this like use your tension here. It's tied onto your hook, and whatever tension you want, you can get it. Push in on your automatic reel, and it'll take the tension up, or you pull back and uh, get the proper tension. So number twelve hook, must add seventy nine fifty seven B. This here is a Thompson bobber, bobbin. It, it's uh, an old-fashioned one. The newer ones don't have this much metal on. I particularly like these a little better, I guess, because I'm a little old-fashioned. They're a little heavy, but they will hold the tension on the thread. Now here's the surgical forceps with the monol on. That's the beam of the extended body. How many times you wrap it? Just wrap it so this is good and solid, so it, it'll not slip. Holds a pretty good tension. Okay, now you're going to use your contraption there. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm using these rubber bands below to keep the more on an even plane, just a little bit on the upgrade. A mayfly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the rubber band. I would just use the the uh, surgical forcep and it would come up on an angle such as here. this, like that. Yeah. Oh, if I use this with the grasshopper, it would be too much of a pitched angle up. Okay. Now, what's that you're adding on there? This is art foam. I better get my. This is my ribbing material. Art foam is kind of a foam rubber stuff. Huh? Yeah, it's just Real a foam thin. rubber. Uh huh. You can buy it at most hobby shops. Okay, now you've added in there just a little bit of 
Gold. Gold mylar. Yeah, mylar, tinsel to this is what'll this will be the ribbing. The gold ribbing on the fly. Should have had a little longer, but I Just clip that back to your I have a little electrical clip here that I made out of an electrician's uh, little electrical clip. Now you start one wrap around the mylar and uh, mylon and one go underneath the, through the hook, underneath the hook and around. That binds the, that binds the material and when you, when I come back I'll show you it'll, it'll make a smooth it, body. It will not be a void spot. You know, you're just building out the extended body with the foam. That's, so. mm -hmm. it's a, wrapping yeah, it around mm -hmm. the mylar and the thread. That's right. Now you try to keep that as uniform as possible. I mean, uniform as a grasshopper's body would be. So you're covering up all the tinsel? All the tinsel that's, that I started this and all the wrappings. Now, about half of the hook is what we want with this monolon or this uh, art foam body. Half of the shank. Yes, uh huh. Now we'll rib the body with this gold tinsel. Just wrap that around, leave a little space in between. Leave a little gap in there. Try to make it uniform. It looks a little better. And this, don't be discouraged that you might have a little wider one place than the other. After you tie a few of them, you'll get accustomed to, you, you, it will get, it'll be a habit, it'll turn into a habit. And you just use your thread and wrap around the end to hold it right. together. Mm -hmm. Now you t cut this off at this point here because we have no use for this extended. Just cut it right off. The option. Just cut it right, but right up to the body. <laughs> Now the wings of the of the grasshopper come on. And that's what I was I was looking for a feather. But you can shut that down when I get this. Put them two knots right close together. Yeah, those are pheasant feathers? This is a dyed pheasant tail feather. Kind of a yellow. Yeah, it's a yellow tint to them. You take this one over here and go over there and you spread them out just right. And you cut this off. Now, obviously I got that. I could show them how to tie that knot. So that's the thing. I didn't, uh, so you've got thread on the back side. You've got the thread on the front side to hold them out yeah, away from the bottom. That's right. You spread you, you, you work the thread to keep your, move your leg. See how I can move that leg? I can make it go back there. Or I can make it right to there. You can put that, your, your thread will determine where your, your legs and your material goes. I don't have one of them handy here, but I'll take and I'll show you how to tie the pheasant. I usually take 10 strands. It's not absolutely necessary. It's not absolutely necessary, but I count these out at 10. Just grab them so it'll be uniform. Pull them off. Then take a easy clip and about three eighths of an inch from the end. This is your foot. Take and turn your clip. Turn it to the le to the left. Go inside with your other clip and pick it up with like that. Now you just pull this through here like that and you kind of turn, you turn. Just get it evened out then. Uh -huh, and turn and let, let all the legs come out. Now this, okay. and then to a, when you tighten this up, take your thumb and tighten that knot and pull it this way. So it gives us all like on a 45 degree, and there is your leg. Only this one isn't a tinted one. 
I don't know if you can see the difference or not. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. been yellow. It's been pretty good. Now, what else could you use if you didn't have a pheasant? You could use... Just about anything? You could use a wood duck flank. You could use ever so many different materials. Now, you can use a wood duck flank like this. I drop this. Make them as fat as you like, or right at the black part there. I use that. Take, turn that to the left. Make it turn. Oh, getting out of the focus of the camera. Bring it through. You just sort of turn that around till the foot itself pops right out. Till it pop pops out, right. I make that set near on a 45 degree angle. Then you could have a wood duck flank. You can use uh, you can use elk hair, deer hair. I wouldn't recommend because it's too brittle. You can make an elk hair foot. You can make uh, uh, here's some. Sand Hill Crane that you could make these feet out of. Now this has been dyed yellow. Sand Hill Crane Feathers, you can go over up in Swan Valley where the Sand Hill Cranes summer or up in Island Park and walk out through the through the marshy spots and you'll find, this is where I found these feathers. You can find all the feathers you want. If you want to use a complete yellow leg There's no end to what you can use for this. There's just make the same. Twist the knot. Run the knot right up close to the clip. That one isn't the, the sand hill crane feathers are are not uh, too strong, but you can still make a feather this. Or if you were making crawdads or to run them out the front, you can make your crawdad feet this way. So there's no end to what you can use. Don't stop that you have at anything. You, you, you don't have to use pheasant. If you don't have any pheasant, you can use any, any amount of different feathers. Same way with the wood duck. Here's a wood duck flight. Now I'm going to put the wing on this next. And uh, here is a wood duck barred. I use these barred ones because the other ones I use for Light Gay Hill, Hendrickson, uh, Quill Gordon, and other flies that have a have a wood duck that have a wood duck wing like this. The reason I use these, they use make a lot of uh, uh, Atlantic salmon flies out of this type of feather. You've probably seen them on. But I, I don't have any use for them here, so I've made, I've made, uh, here's, here's where I've cut a wood duck, wood duck grasshopper wing. You can also make caddis wings. Here's, here's the, here's the one not uncut. Here it is cut, it's cut right out of a, out of a wood duck down here further. That's good. Mm -hmm. And now, how uh, do you cut those out when you have a I use I use a uh, I, I use I made a punch. This is a piece of aluminum. This is a piece of uh, bandit material, stainless steel bandit material, and I sharpen it before I bend it. This one here I ground down in because I wanted the width of the. If you'll see, the width of that mm -hmm. is cut like that. Use something soft like lead or wood or uh, polyethylene or something or polypropylene uh, bars or something. So you just punch that right out of the just center? Just punch it out and just hit it, lay it down on a, on a block of wood or uh, some soft material and you just punch it out. Set it the center and punch it out. Then you can use the rest of the of the wood duck flank for something else. 
or you can cut these uh, cut it out of turkey wings, uh, pheasant uh, wings. There's certain feathers on pheasant uh, at the body of the pheasant that you can uh, cut the wing out of. It just more or less depends on the color you want. That's right. It's and uh, uh, here is a here's some wings I have cut. There is a pheasant wing. That's a pheasant. Uh, this is a flank of a gadwall duck. Flank feather of a gadwall duck. You see the dark bars in it. Uh, you can use uh, Hungarian partridge feathers. You can use grouse. Sage hen feathers, or some are, are uh, durable enough, but most of them they use sage hen feathers for soft ackle flies. And I, now here, for an underwing, which you do not have to use, but for an underwing, I have some dyed polar bear. And some of the grasshoppers have, like the red wing grasshoppers, have this, it's cut off a little, very little. That's kind of a bright fluorescent orange. It's a fluorescent orange, right. And when you get, cut it, pull it like that, and here's enough for another fly. Matter of fact, I'll use this part right on this fly right here. You put that right there, an under hackle. So you're using just one wing and then the under, under wing. Yes, uh huh. This is an under wing. It's a red hackle. And if you like, a lot of grasshoppers have yellow in them. This is kip. This is calf tail, dyed calf tail. It's a yellow, brightly yellow calf tail. You can take a little of that. You can also save that if you like for the next fly. And I'll put it right on this fly here and set it right there like that. And you've got a dyed polar bear, fluorescent polar bear, and a yellow dyed calf tail kip. Now you come up a ways on that to give us room. Okay, it's pulled our legs in. So you want to set your legs back out. Run up one shot over there. And you got it. Cut that off what you have here. Now I fill this thread, this uh, hook back up with Now I'm using the rock check tail again. Are you just using the, the brown part of the This is the brown, brown dip. So the tip is brown. you got to, uh, it, uh, the, the brown or tan, so sort of call it brown or tan. Uh, now this hair stacker here, you don't have to have it, but it makes it makes it a little easier. See how it evens the hair up on the end? Now you can see the rock check, how black it is there and how brown it is right on the tip. And it's translucent rock check hair is very, very good for catching fish. Now I cut that off there. I've tied enough of these. I know about where the length of them, so you'll just have to tie a few to get used to the how long you want this these feet to stick out on the rock. Now show me again how you came up with that thread. You mean uh, on your finger there? Oh, underneath. How does how do? So that you don't uh, have the hair come all the way around the hook. Okay. Let me come right off one one time. You got thread on the hook. Make sure that's the rule of any fly. The only one thing now. I better put a wing on this one. You should put the wing on before because it gets a little bit before the rock chuck. Before the rock chuck, right? Here's a now here's the wing, and get this wing about to the end of your tail of the body, at your extended body. Bring this thread right up close to the legs. To the legs. Then put your body that. Don't worry about the legs, squashing them down or anything. You won't hurt them. Just Cut that off. Yep. Now pull this out like that. I got a little bit of of, uh, of um, wood duck flank sticking there. You bring this up here, 
and that one didn't happen to have any under it so and sometimes if you want this plastic cement use two-thirds plastic cement and one-third head cement it toughens up the wing so it'll hold together and uh, it does a little better job it, it stays together and it, it looks well now the rock check You know, when you, when you wrap that thread around there, show me how you slip it up between your fingers there. So. Uh -huh. Bring that rock check right up here and hold it tight. So. Bring it up here, come down there, hold tight, not, don't tighten it, then tighten it when you come up. And in this case here, rock check is very, very slippery. It's slick. See, this time I didn't have to. Now you come back to here, now you separate, get the mount. You, you divide up the legs. The ones. Those are going to be the front legs. These are going to be the front legs, yep. Okay, now we're ready for the clip here. here. I'll use this little tool that I made. It's made out of a old pen as you can see. This doesn't happen to be handyman's duo cleaner. <laughs> Yellowstone Highway. Use a piece of, of just leader material. I think this is around 15 pound test. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it has to be stiff enough to hold. And then you just tighten. You, you just got an adjustable loop there to hang there. things with. Mm -hmm. And this little plug here comes right with the pen. It's, it's right built right in the pen and all I've done is uh, put the leader on it. Now, I dyed this deer hair yellow, as you can see. It's not a bright yellow, and you don't want too bright a yellow. Although you can use regular deer hair, you can use mountain goat hair, you can use any kind of a hair that'll, that you can clip. White tail, mule deer, black tail, any kind. Now, I, as a rule, take a now here's a, uh, a, a take and a comb out all the down. I happen to have a little, uh, a little uh, old vacuum cleaner here that I use, and keeps the hair from sticking to your fingers. It pulls it all off and cleans it well. You don't have to have one, but they help. And might pick one up at a garage sale someplace and now you rig just, it up. You just clipped off the middle, both ends. Kind of the middle, get the right middle, because that's the stiffest part of the. About how long? The stiffest part of the. It's about three quarters of an inch long. And when you put this on, you come one wrap around and hold it. You come the second time around. Okay, now. Watch that as I tighten it up. I'll go real slow. So it just See how it distributes, it right it. It distributes the, the hair evenly around the hook. And then you go work your thread back and forth so it'll work right down to the bottom so it don't show anywhere that and it makes uh, it'll, it'll keep the hair so it won't come loose off your hook just makes a more sturdier fly. Now this, the reason I've got this on here is to keep the hair away from the, away from the head of the hook. I just, while you clip it? While I clip the thing off. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you, if you don't have that on there, it's getting in the road. You, you can do it without, but you'll be clipping, you got to watch out so you don't clip your thread, and you don't, uh, you don't want to cut any of your rock chuck hair off. Are you just clipping right down to the nub, huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. Right down to the nub. You can clip. Yeah. Take this out. This here pulls back. Pull this. This is ready for the next next fly. You don't have to have one of these, but if uh, if you need one, I can tell you how to build one. 
Now you spread your head, your legs back like that. You don't have to be too careful that they're right. Just spread them back and start your thread in front of the in front of the legs. Make them tight. Didn't. I gotta oh, push it back a little. There, that gives me a little more room. You know, what, what do you call that knot you're tying there? This is a whip finish. So that's the last thing you're doing on That's the last thing without clipping the deer hair. Now the now I got the deer hair to complete complete the clip. I'll take it out of the vise, so maybe I can show you a little bit. You just get your hook, your scissors right underneath, so you don't clip the legs off. And back there. Now, put up my and I've got to. Now you're just kind of straightening everything out there. Yeah, you just, just bring them around. You can bet. Yeah. Too many people are there. They feel they're too delicate to be. You can pull this stuff around without breaking anything. It just you work it around to where it's squared off. Uh -oh. I got a little bit legs there, a little too long there, so we just now there's the fly. There's one little deer hair right there that now there's the fly. There's the under. You can see the yellow the yellow and red uh, uh, fluorescent uh, polar bear hair. Mm -hmm. Here's a side view. Here's the top view. One little there. Now the bottom view is probably the view the fish sees, right? That's the view the fish sees. So you can see that right there. It looks buggy and hairy. But if you notice the rock chuck, I don't know if it'll show in the film or not, but the rock chuck is very translucent. It's very live. And it'll float. It floats well in the water. It, the, the sink will hook and the body will lie in the water, but the legs will support any of the rest of it and the rock chuck hair. And that's the way a grasshopper lies in the water. It lies low in the water. That's one reason I never put a hackle on my flies, because they uh, do ride. The hackle will hold the bodies off of the water. 